All right, everyone is muted. Go ahead, Don, what are we talking about? All right, tonight, I'm gonna let everybody talk about what is on their mind. Uh, I've been pulling honey today, and probably everybody that I know of everywhere is getting rained out, so uh, we went over there and worked in the rain for about four hours. You need to get in your hives, you need to get that honey off, and it's a good thing we did get over there and pull honey because we found two hives that had a bunch of queen cells in there because they're just backfilling like crazy. So uh, everybody gets on the chat, they're, uh, I guess they're uh, bashful, don't wanna ask questions, but ask questions. If you got something going with your hive, something going on, let's talk about it and see if maybe to help somebody else out. Okay, well, Leah's got the first question. Go ahead, Leah. All right, um, so my bees have been a little aggressive lately. I was able to work them at first uh, without any smoke or gear. Um, the last couple of times that I've opened up the box, as soon as I've opened it up, I've had a swarm of girls come after me. Um, so when I worked them a couple of days ago, um, I had I smoked myself pretty heavy, and they kept coming at me and swarming me, so I got a big cloud of smoke around myself. They'd go back to the hive. So um, it seems like I'm having to use a lot more smoke. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. Uh, I did... Um, give them a second box, um, the, um, and I checkerboarded that because they weren't moving up into the second box. Um, I've got two three hives in two different locations, three hives that I got from you, um, and they're all acting pretty aggressive and flying around my head. So what should I do? And I did get water in my double feeder, got water on one side, top feeder, and uh, sugar water on the other side. All right. Is uh, you running screen bottom boards? Solid bottom. Okay. How high is your hives up off the ground? Um, probably about, about knee high. Um, yeah, maybe or less. Okay. What I would do is go out there mid morning and just kind of look up underneath the hive. I would think you got a lizard or one of those geckos or something under there. Something is tormenting those bees. And a lot of times, you get out there early enough, you'll see one. Okay. Because bees is not going to change overnight like that. Okay. Not unless they're all queenless, and the chances of all the hives being queenless at the same time would be, you know, rare. No, they're all, there's eggs, they're laying good. Yeah. So, I, I think you've got something, uh, a predator or something around there that's agitating them. Okay. Have you got the openings real wide? Uh, one of them, I still have an entrance reducer, because you remember I had a disastrous hive where I nearly killed them all. So, um that hive is coming along. They've only filled that about half of that box, and I still have an entrance reducer on there where there's only about an inch and a half opening on that one. The other one, I've got it opened up um, about three quarters of the way, and, and that box is just boiling with bees. Um, what have you got on the third hive? Do you have an entrance reducer on those? Yeah, so we've, I've still got entrance reducers on all three of them. I would leave your entrance reducers in till you get all the comb drawn out. Okay. Uh, and then just keep an eye on the front of the entrance. If they look like they're getting a traffic jam, that'd be an indication to pull the entrance reducer out. Yeah, but when they're, when they're building a lot of comb, they're going to take a lot more sugar water. They're going to be a little bit more irritable, especially, you know, we've had rain for like two to three weeks and the bees are all piled up in there. Okay. And what about, um, I've been feeding them uh, sugar water with tea tree oil. I know people are not supposed to eat tea tree oil. So what about eating the honey when I've been feeding them sugar water with tea tree oil? Well, I've been using tea tree oil for years. Uh, I usually put a good dose in in the spring and in the fall, and then I'll hit them a few times during, you know, the summer, spring and summer months. It's basically to prevent, you know, nosema is basically all it's going to do. But there's a lot of old wives' tales out there. There's uh, a plant called mountain laurel, and for years I've had people say that's what you feed your mother-in-law because it's it'll make her real sick or it could poison her or th and those kind of things. But I've eaten poison ivy uh, honey. I watch bees work it and eat it. I mean, there's a lot of old wives' tales out there. People that just keep you know putting them out there. Okay, and then um, since these are uh, first-year hives. Um, how much honey do I need to make sure that they have? Um, I haven't pulled anything off of any of them yet, but I want to make sure that I don't starve them to death this winter. So I think you'd be better off to run singles myself, you know. that You hold the heat down. 
if you're pulling the honey off, just keep some in reserve that you can feed it back to them. Okay. But if you keep them in singles, they use less honey than if you have a, a super of honey on there because the heat's going to rise. They have to eat more honey, you know, to keep the heat up in there. So in a single, how many frames of honey should they have going into the winter? Well, basically, you know, up there where you're at, I would say at least three to four frames. As long as you've got five frames in the middle, it's got a lot of brood on them, you're in good shape. Because we take eight frame and we'll make two splits or three splits out of it in September. And all I'm even looking for is one frame of honey put in there because I'm going to feed them honey if they get light. And the minute you put them in a five frame box, they start packing more honey in there. They start downsizing. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Next up is Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Hello. Hello. Leon wants me to ask, we've found a lot of the little sticky toes tree frog up under my lid. Do they eat honeybees? Is there a way to keep them out of the hive? What, what are you describing? You know, those little frogs that have the sticky toes, they'll get on the your oh, oh, No, they won't hurt nothing. I mean, we've got a few hives that's got a bunch of ants up in the feeders. They're little tiny ants. I mean, you can reach down and get a handful of them in your hand and it ain't going to hurt you. If that feeder is on top of that hive, they're going to seal it down. They're not going to get inside the hive. As okay. far as the frogs, they're just looking for a cool place. We're getting a lot of snails up underneath the lid. These big old snails, they're just hanging up underneath there. Just Everybody's looking for a nice, cool, dry place. Preloading. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I see you're not swelled up today. No, I'm looking pretty good this week. <laughs> <laughs> I had one more question. Uh, what is the best thing to do about the ants? There's been a lot of discussion on the Facebook page today. Well, about what kind of ants? The little ones that get in your hive. If they're, you know, if you use the type of feeders that we use, the hive top feeders, you could put cinnamon in there. If the cinnamon don't run them out, they're, you know, the big black ants, they're just in there getting a little drink. You know, they're not going to hurt nothing. Once yeah. that feeder's on top, they're not getting in the hive because they seal it down. you got to pry them off. Yeah, well, I've as seen far as getting up in the hives, you can grease your stands or you could put uh, bleach around them every so often. Just put bleach around them. Would they, would they do any harm to the bees? No, they won't get, do no harm. Even those big black ants, you can have a bunch of them in the feeders. If you get the box open, look inside, you won't see no black ants in there. Not unless you got one frame of bees in there in an awful week. Okay. All right, that's all. Okay. All right. Paul, go ahead. Don, how you doing? Okay. I tell you, in the last two weeks, my hives, like, exploded. Yeah. But um, I, I uh, went in there this morning, and I did two splits in, into uh, five-frame nukes, and I picked up two queens. So right now I have the queen cages in there, and I'm going to introduce those new queens. But I, while I was doing the split in one of my hives, there was a bunch of queen cells. They were on the bottom. And the queen was in, the, the original queen is still in there, but there's no eggs. So are, are they trying to replace her, or? Well... What does the frames look like? Are they full of honey? No, there's a few frames that are actually full of uh, cap root. Well, there's no place for the queen to lay. You can either put those cells and make splits out of them, or you can put that queen in another box and let the cells hatch out. I mean, if you're making increases, no. you know, that's a good thing right there. Well, not all of the frames are full of cap root. I'd say... The bottom brood chamber has no cap brood. There's plenty of space for her to lay eggs, but she's not laying. I don't know why. What about the second box? The second box has, I'd say, about five frames of cap brood. Okay, well, she's probably moving around in here with this kind of weather, you know. 
you're not having the results that you should have with, you know, hot weather. It's been cold. It's been damp. It's been raining for three weeks. Sometimes uh, nature takes advantage of it. They break the mite cycle that way. But if you've got queen yeah. cells, you're either going to have to move those queen cells or move the queen, one of the two. Can I take the queen cells out? Yeah, you can take them out. Because right now I don't have any more. Well, I have a Jester box. Can I put a couple of frames in there and use that for the time being? Yeah, you could use that. You think one frame of bees is good enough? If you got they cells just made on a split it? out of this. Yeah. A cup of bees is all you need. If that cell is sealed, that's all you need is a cup of bees. All right, because I was in the hive two weeks ago. There were no queen cells. So those queen cells have to be, I'd say, you know, the most 14 days old. Yeah, well, they're 14. They're going to hatch out any minute. They're probably 15, maybe to 16 days. All right, so if I, so if I do one frame, if I take those fr the one frame out, with the queen cell, I put it in the jester box, and whatever bees are on that frame, you think that's enough bees? Should be. If you're the only worried bad about, thing it, about the just if you're going to move that box, say three or four feet away, I'll shake another frame of bees in there, or take one frame with the bees that's on it and close the box up. Put a screen over there where it can't get out. Because you don't have yeah. much brood on there, you got sealed cells. The bees will migrate to those sealed cells. They'll protect them. If it's wood and wax, you can cut a cell out on that stuff there. Even if you're cutting a pair of cells that's stuck together, even triplets, cut an inch around them, put it in a box, shake some bees. Don't you have extra boxes? I only have the, uh, the just the, the nuke boxes. How many hives you have right now? Right now I have five hives. I have two five frame nukes going that I just split today with queen cages in them. And the only bad thing about the Jester box is I can't put a feeder on them. You don't need a feeder. You've got queen cells in there and there's gonna be enough honey on that frame. But if you got that many boxes, you need a minimum of 15 nukes right now. Yeah. Because you're either going to have to split them or you need supers. And for that many boxes, you're going to need at least 15, 20 supers. You're going to need one to two supers well, in each box. Yeah, I have 15 supers on hand that I have. Well, um, if you've got that many supers, put two supers together and put a deep frame in there and then put it on a bottom board. If you don't have a bottom yeah. board, you can just use a piece of plywood on the bottom and one on the top. Drill you a hole in the front of that one of the supers. Let them use that as an entrance. Sometimes make do well, with what you got. No, I know what you're saying, but I, I really don't want any more hives. But I'll do one more split tomorrow in the jester box, yeah. and then I can. I have one hive available right now, but it's a ten frame, and I don't want to put one frame of bees in a ten frame hive. Well, you got to make do with what you got. But three of the frames have queen cells on them. But I'll take one of the frames and put it in the jester box with the queen cell. Or should I put, should I move the other queen cells and put all three queen cells in the jester box? You either got to move the queen or you got to move the cells. But one cell should be enough. Well, if you've got that many cells and you don't have any boxes, why worry about cutting them? Just move a frame. No, but I'm saying, say one cell doesn't hatch out. Would it be, would it be wise to put maybe two cells in the just a box? It won't hurt. When we cut, we usually put one cell in. As long as you don't damage that cell and you pinch it. That's why when you first start cutting cells, Cut an inch around the outside of that cell. That way you've got plenty of room to hold it with your fingers. Yeah. All right, I'll give that a shot. Then I'll, I'll make another split tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Just, I, have one, I have one more quick question. All right. You have, you have the video where you push in the wax 
to make those uh, sort of bees make those queen cells. Right. Now, say you damage the comb. Will they make a queen cell there? If you got a good egg, they will, or a larva. But you already got sealed cells. You don't need to do nothing else. No, I know, but but say accidentally you damage the uh, the comb. Right. Will they make a queen cell there if, if if the comb is damaged? Well, sometimes they will. I mean, you could cut a cell in half, and they'll take them. They'll take the best part, and they'll make a queen cell out of it. But if you've got queen cells, cut an inch around it. You're not going to damage nothing. Yeah, I'm just I'm just going to take the whole frame out. You're going to have gray hairs worrying about that. You got to make mistakes in the beekeeping, or you're not learning nothing. Uh, well, that's why I'm. That's why I'm here every week with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Don. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anthony. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. My kind of question today is based on. Um, I don't see cap tunny in the top of my frames three of my hives are really boiling i put a second box on there about three weeks ago because i wanted to have a um, double brood box before i put the super on and there's tons of bees in there and yesterday was the first time in a month that i really did an in-depth check i've only been filling the feeder i've just been leaving them along there's a lot of uh uncapped nectar you know this and the frames are heavy a C- couple of my queens are just doing fantastic when i pick up a frame the two-thirds of the frame is all capped brood but i I'm, I'm not seeing you know what i'm used to seeing is you know, you know what i mean a few rows of capped honey in the top tons of nectar but not capped off so to me that means they haven't got the moisture down to where it's acceptable to them to cap it. Um, Either that or you don't have enough honey flow. We got a lot. I mean, I stood over there for 10 minutes the other day just watching them, and they're coming back with their legs packed with pollen. Well, pollen and and nectar is two different things. Yeah, I know. But there's a lot of nectar in in the cells already, you know? And... Even the bottom boxes have a, a vent about this big in one side, but my two top boxes, I put a two inch hole in opposite corners. Mm-hmm. So there's good ventilation. I did that because it's always so warm here. Yeah. Um, but they have ventilation, there's plenty of nectar, there's plenty of pollen, but I'm not seeing the top of the frame capped out. This is some, but very little. Everything else seems okay, you know. Do you have any any clue or guess why I'm not seeing capped out in the top of the frame? Well, this is a strange year. I mean, I'm not even having capped honey over here. We're getting it halfway or sometimes a third of the way, and we just have to let it on until it gets capped. Yeah. If it's the moisture content in the air is so high, they cannot evaporate it. That's what's happening. So, you know, there's no two years going to be the same. This is the first year I've seen like this in many, many years. Okay. And the night before, it's really, really humid, isn't it? Not every day. It's not like I'm in a tropical, humid place, you know. It's it's up and down. But, you know, sure, we have more, probably more humidity than where any of you are. Right. It just and, takes time, uh, man. That's... Uh, probably part of the big part of the problem so and last week i mentioned that i was having a problem with these big black banded paper wasps and i went out there with a plastic rain suit because those guys got a stinger that's about three eighths of an inch you know i found one out there that died with the stinger stings fully extended and they've got a hell of a stinger on them So I went out there, I'm sure I looked great, in a fluorescent green rain suit with my electronic uh, SWAT racket. (laughs) 
That won't kill those big ones, but it'll knock them out of the air to where you can go stomp them or whatever you want to do. I only killed three of them that day, but since I killed those three, they're not bothering my hives. I watched them for a couple of days. I don't see the big black thing over there hovering back and forth. So I took the entrance reducers away, opened up the hives, and it looks like it's okay. So I hope they're gone because they were really had the girls on alert for the whole day. There was like 300 of them on the porch all day trying to keep the thing from landing. Yep. Anthony, going back to your honey deal, not capping it. Uh, they're yep. probably such a nectar flow on that they, they're bringing it in faster than they can cap it. So they'll, they'll bring it in while they got it, and then they'll cap it later. That could very well be, Joe, because there's a lot of nectar. My frames are really heavy. They're just not capped out. Good possibility. Yeah. And Paul, for Paul, I don't know if Paul ever did his own queen. A couple of times I've heard him say he's – bought queens a couple of times um go ahead and give it a try put that frame in whatever box you have i just did my first one where i found a queen cell and i put it in a new box i had and uh it's the first one i did i don't really know what i'm doing except what i learned here and see on the internet but it's really basic the bees do everything but uh you know, mine hatched out and must have went out and mated because yesterday I see larvae in that box. So I know she's doing something. So it worked out well. Give it a try. Let them see what happens. Sometimes self-teaching does the best. Yeah. Okay, that's it for me for now. Let someone else ask a question. Go ahead. Thank you. All right. Uh, Donald, you're up next. Go ahead. You got his mic on? Oh, he's not even coming. There he is. He's back. Donald, it's all you. You're up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. uh, Don, I noticed that uh, a lot of my hives at night have really big beards off of the uh, hive. Is that just because it's getting to be hotter and they're just staying cool or? Well, they where, where about you, you at? Uh, I'm about, I'm, I'm in Canton, Georgia, about an hour from you. Okay, well, you either got a hive that's it's awful crowded and they're overpopulated, or you've got a queen excluder on there and they're, they're, they can't get the circulation. Okay. All you, right. You're running queen excluders? No, no queen excluders. Just, uh, I got, let's say I got, uh, uh, two mediums and two shallows on it right now. That's your problem right there. So, if you're going to run mediums, you need to run a minimum of three. Okay. Then run your su your supers for your honey. Okay. You don't have enough area for them. You need right now with the way the weather's been, two deeps. They'll be packing that out right now. Okay. So yeah. I'd go through there and check for queen cells. You might have queen cells in there. All right, and uh, when whenever I do add my um, my honey supers on, um, should I checkerboard those so they'll get up in there? Or uh, are you using full sheets or are you using starter strips? Starter strips. Well, what I would do is checkerboard it with a frame that's drawn out with a yeah. starter strip next to it, and then another one drawn out. That's going to get them drawing it out a lot better. Okay. Now, if you're running three mediums. Once you get to that fourth box, you can cut, if you're running eight frame stuff, cut down to seven. Okay. Use your finger as a spacer and, and uh, even checkerboard that. They'll right. make a wider comb. They're not going to make any more honey in that box than they would if you had eight frames in it. It's yeah. just they make them wider. You've got so many cubic inches, whether it's honey in there or whether it's frames in there. Yeah, and I, it's just I, I, easier to uncap it. That, that's what I was going to say. I noticed on one of your videos, you said it's yeah. easier to uncap that way. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. I uh, appreciate it. Okay. Okay. John Roten, your turn. Hey, Don. How are you? Hey. This, this. Okay. Hey, I've got a uh, uh, kind of a problem, and I don't see what you think about it. I've got uh, bees that have been robbing, and I had three hives that were queenless. So 
I was talking to a beekeeper that lives here, and he told me, he asked me if I had any queenless. I said, yeah, and he said, well, you probably should move those. So I did, and I brought two back that had queens, but yesterday and today, they're still robbing, and I think it's somebody else's bees that are robbing mine because these hives aren't real strong. And uh, You're I've running already, queen ex or, uh, entrance reducers? I've reduced them down to as small as I could go, and one of them today, they were all over the bottom board, so I, I put it back where I got about a four inch by three eighths opening, you know, where you, uh, but they're back robbing. They're robbing everything I've got here. If they're robbing that there, you need to cut it down to no more than one inch by three eighths high. But I, I mean, all of them but that one are like that. They're three quarters by three eighths, and they're still robbing them. And uh, I think what it is, I. I don't know. I hadn't talked to the guy. A guy that moved up here that has said he had 3,000 hives in Texas. And I think he may have just moved some in up here and because he would be less than half a mile from me. And He's the bees are going. Hives, they, they'll rob you out. So I, is my only option is to move the, what I've got left away from here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just not keep any here anymore then? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's what I have to do. I guess I'll have to do that in the morning then because there may not be nothing left if I wait another day. Don't take well, them long. Do When they do that, can they run your bees completely out and clean oh, yeah. out? Oh, yeah. Because I've, I've lost some. They've, did, they've just, I mean, they, they may not only be four or five bees left in there. Well, the main thing is if you've got queens in there, if they get in there and they kill your queen, once there's a queenless hive, they'll jump on that faster because the bees oh. don't have no way, you know, there's no reason to defend the hive no more. The queen's gone. Okay. Production's just going to go to hell. That's what they've done then. They're killing my queens because I, I had I had queens in there and mm -hmm. there's just nothing left in them. So evidently he's moved some really strong hives in up here because mine aren't. I mean, I, I don't have any that's even a double box right now. Yeah. So... Okay, thank you. Okay, back to Pat Knight. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, the guy that was just talking. Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch his name before he got started. But he ought to check with his local um, zoning and stuff because if that guy moved in so many hives, he might not be allowed to. <laughs> there's some states that have laws about um, if there's already beehives within a certain radius and that kind of thing. Yeah, check with the apiary guy, see if somebody has any information. What state are you in, John? Kansas? Arkansas, and we are registered, but I haven't, they haven't contacted me that anybody else has got bees around here. I'd call the apiary guy for your state and ask him what the regulations are, because that guy may not have permit, he might not be allowed to have them that close to you. Right. I, I don't think you're, you are without letting the other beekeepers know, but nobody's contacted me. Yeah. There was a lady on the Facebook page the other day said that she had been notified, I think it was Arkansas, that a guy was uh, going to move in and they had 30 days to respond. So you ought to check. He might not be able to allow, allow to have that many that close to established well, beekeepers. No, no. He, he has those in another place, but I think he has moved some in because yeah. of the beekeepers. They come out and circle when they leave my hives, and they go that direction. Yeah. So, I call the big guy and see if he has any information. Okay, that's what I'm going to do then. Might not hurt, but it might maybe, maybe not, you know, worth a try. I almost Thanks, think I heard something on that too, Pat. I thought I saw something on the Internet where um, if a beekeeper in Arkansas moved so many miles from your place, you would get notified. Right. And, then you had to go ahead and say yay or nay. But yeah, that's why I'd call the state apiary guy. He'll know what the rule is, and he'll know if that guy has a right to have that many that mm -hmm. close to you already established. He might just be a bootleg uh, hauler, too. Could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. Because they, they do that a lot in Florida. They come in there, and you're supposed to have your hives uh, with an identification number in Florida. But there's people that they'll drop 100, 500 hives in one spot. They do them on pallets. They're in, they're out within a couple hours. Right. Yeah. Well, you never know until you try. 
Well, thank you. Don, Don, you're right on that. Right around the corner, I told you about uh, last year, somebody brought in all them colonies, and then, then um, they put out the pollen feeder, the Man Lake pollen feeder. I had all them problems with small hive beetles, which I beat. And mm -hmm. still, here's his colonies. He brought them back again this time. There's not one label on one of them colonies. So you're right. The label, babe. If there's no labels on them, I'd contact your state inspector. Yeah. Huh. Will do. Okay. All right. Next up is Dennis Crutchfield. Go ahead. Got to turn that Dennis. mic on. How you doing? Yeah. Working now. Is it working now? Yep, can hear you. All right, Nick, can you hear me? Yep. Now you you just muted yourself. Uh, I'm going to order me a staple gun. I've been using brand nailers. So I'd go with the staples. Uh-huh. Um, do you recommend the electric or the air? I like air. Paper? I like air. Okay. Well, I thought maybe I got a compressor. That's usually what I use. I didn't know which one would hold up the best. So, that's Well, if I'm you're going to do fast. work away from your house, we have some hand ones we have to use for packages when we're shaking packages. Uh, the hand one works good, but at the house here or at my son's place, we use air everything. We put our bottom boards on with a one-inch wide crown, and we put our high bodies together with a seven, seven sixteenths crown and our frames with a quarter crown. In our queen cages, we use 23 gauge uh, staples, quarter uh, quarter legs on them. Okay, that's all I needed. Thank you. Okay. okay. Mike Morris, you're up next. All right, good. Hey, Don, everybody. Uh, I was out there looking today. We've had a lot of rain down here. I'm on the coast of Mississippi. Right. And that little uh, rain came through, so uh, had a lot of rain. I was up there looking today. There's a lot of... Uh, like big drones and stuff coming in and out of the hive and they were real active. Uh, do you think they might be getting ready to uh, swarm? I hadn't opened it with this week, so. If you go through your hive about every two weeks, every 14 days, all the way down to the bottom board and check that bottom board and everything, you should notice queen cells or uh, a lot of drone, capped, capped drones. That usually okay. lets you know they're getting ready to swarm. Yeah, I, I was looking. I, I, I went through one the other day and pulled a high, pulled a, some honey off of it, but I didn't go through the very bottom box. It was like three high, and I didn't get the bottom one. Uh, and then I, I've been watching it today, and it looks like a lot of bees. It's not as many bees, so they may have swarmed on me. I don't yep. know. I've had three swarms here today, and it's crazy because it's been raining off and on all day, and – there's swarms in the air. In fact, I got two hanging in trees right now. Been there for two days. And I'm not climbing no ladder to get no bees out of no tree. I'm too old to fall hit the ground. I don't bounce back like I used to. I hear you. So the best thing is just, just to go look for um, those queen cells and see what I got. I would go to, to the bottom. If you're not going all the way to the bottom, you're missing half of the inspection. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay. okay. Nathan, you're up next. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. All right, Don, uh, I got a quick question for you. I've got a hive. Uh, they've got hot. Um, I think the queen's failing. She's not laying too good. What would you do in that situation? Would you pull her out and put her in a nuke? Well, you can pull her out and put her in a nuke, but what are you doing for treatments? Bar treating for... Mites. You treating for mites? I haven't treated for mites. And how many? How long you been having those hives? It's just one. It was a split. I think. I think it was. You know, she just didn't get mated good. Well, I wouldn't blame it on that. You know, right now, June, July, and August is when you need to treat. If you're not treating, you start getting mites. Your hive's going to get ill on you real quick because population starts, you know, dwindling down. And you can go through and look at your frames. Look at the bees. Look for singe-looking wings or K-wings. Look for things in front of the hive. Those are telltale signs, but you need to check. 
Okay. Um, I mean, this has been going on for a pretty good while. It started, you know, after the after the, um, that they I split them. Um, Queen come back, and she hasn't never really started laying. I mean, well, there's if she hadn't really started laying much, then maybe you need to replace that queen. Yeah, that's that. But I'm I'm wondering, you know, if if I were to pull her out or just go ahead and get rid of her completely. I would put her in a nuke box, and, and if you can buy you a queen, I'd get you a queen and try that there first. Uh, that might be your cheapest way to go about it. But if you'd only have but one hive there and there's no other bees around, it's possible that you didn't get made it good. Well, I've got, I've got 13 hives right oh. now. Well, you have enough drones in all them hives that she should have got mated, but, you know, you probably have the same weather we got. It's, it's nasty weather. It was like a, a week straight rain there, yeah. you know, after yeah. after she emerged. Right. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or it not. But, um, when you treat for mites, on your mite treatment, do you always use the uh, – uh, a cell you acid. can do a lot of different treatments for treating mites, but the most efficient is oxalic acid. I mean, if you don't want to spend the money to do all that there, you can do mineral oil. You know, put it on paper towels. It's it's a it's a slow type treatment. It's not harsh. Uh, it's better than nothing. All right, I'll give that a try. Thanks, Don. Okay. Okay, Leah, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, you. Come on. Okay. Um, so, um, Don, in several of your videos, you talk about how you can you can identify the queen quickly, and I wondered um, uh, to spot her in a frame, and I wanted to explain that a little bit. If you, when you pull your frame up, don't hold it straight out from your face. Hold it down more towards your belly button on a 45, and when you look down on it on an angle, that queen will stand out a whole lot better than if you look straight on into it. Okay. And right, turn, the, like turn the frame slow and always work your frames over the hive in case you miss her. Sometimes she'll run from one side to the other and she might fall off that frame. So that's why I try to teach students to examine the frame over the top of the box. And if she falls, hope she'll fall in the box. Okay. Now I'm, I'm using starter strips, so my foundation isn't wired. So I don't want to tip those completely sideways. If you, tur if you turn the thing vertically... The tallest part, straight up and down, the bees got strength that way. That comb is strong that way. But okay. if you hold it straight and lean it, then it's going to break off at that honey bend. Okay. You can turn it around and round as long as it's standing on end. It's strong that way. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. All right, Paul, you're up again. Don, the worst – the worst fear I have is when I'm going through my frames and I finally spot the queen, I'm so worried when I put the frame back that I'm going to squish her against the, the other frame in there. Do you have any suggestions? I try to show students when you're examining a hive to put one frame up against the wall. And each time you examine a frame, keep it tight. When you get done, put it in, slowly lower it down and push it up against the next one. Don't leave gaps. If you leave gaps, then when you center your frames, you push them all together. There's enough space there. If a queen gets between the frames, you're going to decapitate her. And if you spot the queen, try to put her on the outside there and slide her up against the outside wall. So you mean to switch that frame to the outside wall? If you pull the first frame up on the wall and you look at it, I always set it on the outside. Then pull the next frame up. And when you get done examining that, slide it to the wall all the way across. And then when you get that last frame, set it to the other side. You don't need to slide all them frames back in the same position. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm putting all my frames back to the way they were. No, but yeah, wasting I'm, I'm time. So all right, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. thanks. Okay. Okay, uh, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, I was just curious um, if any of you have ever had a problem with Africanized. Are they prevalent pretty in Georgia, um, Don? Uh, there was a couple reports, one down by Jacksonville, another one down by LaGrange, which is in southern Georgia, but 
I have never had any dealings with them. Okay. I was just curious. Okay, someone, go ahead. You can let the next person ask. Okay. Uh, Dennis Crutchfield, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Liam, um, I took a lot of shortcuts this year and made starter strips without putting any fishing line through mm -hmm. it. And the temperatures got up about 92, 94. I end up going back and replace them all. I just go on and string something up. <laughs> it might save you a lot of extra work. Them bees don't like it when you pull out that mess. <laughs> well, if you hold them horizontally and lean them, they're going to fall on you. But if you do them vertically, they're strong. We yeah. extracted today with starter strips and yeah. deep frames with a starter strip that was drawn out. And if you run that extractor slow and easy, they're perfectly good frames. Not a thing wrong with them. Yeah, these were uh, just frames I had in the brood box. When it got hot, they just dropped off the frames. I just opened them up, get ready to check on them. And when you put your starter strip in, was it? Was I hadn't it, extracted them. They're just sitting in there. Oh, was it called medium brood or was it uh, uh, cut comb? It is 4.9 brood. brood. Brood comb? Yes. It should be thick enough. It should hold up. Yeah. Bees have a tendency when you put starter strips in or you let them draw their own comb, they actually draw the comb a little stronger than foundation itself. It's, you, you might not have enough ventilation in your box if it got that hot. Very well could be. But do you have I'm any vent them holes? All. Do what? You have vent holes? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. I put them where you said they, they ought to be. Yep. And of course, okay. it got pretty warm there for a few days. I just noticed they looked like they was cramped up. They were all building up on the outside. And I said, I better get in there and check, see what's going on. Yep. And lo and behold, I had a mess. So I'm restringing. I figured better safe than sorry. <laughs> yep. It don't hurt. All righty. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, John, your turn. Go ahead. Hey, Don. Hi. Uh, I was wondering what you thought about screen bottom boards. Do you not like them? Or I've only got three out of my 11 hives or have a screen bottom. Should I get rid of them? Or? Well, there's people that like them. I, I tried them for about three weeks, and I throw them in the woods. <laughs> of course, I didn't buy that many. I, I made about, I guess, a dozen. Give them a try. They don't draw uh, your... Uh, Cells is good. There's too much ventilation. Cool nights, you get that cool temperature in there. And if you try putting a, a block on there to block it off, then you end up getting a buildup of wax moth and high beetles in there. On yeah, the solid bottom that. board, they have to clean that bottom good all the time. Yeah, I pulled one of the sheets out of the bottom, and there was some wax moth larvae in there. I just right. squished them, and that's why I didn't know. I was kind of worried about them. I always tell people, you know, if, if they was that good, they'd put screen doors in submarines. Yeah. <laughs> and I was also wondering about the starter strip. Do you use the fishing line? We stopped using fishing line probably three years ago. And the reason we use fishing line, it gives it more strength when you're shipping nukes because they bounce them around at the you know post office or on trucks and stuff. But we don't get... A uh, comb that's old enough with build-up cocoons that's strong enough. So that was one of the reasons we used the fishing line. And there was a couple questions, I guess, on Facebook about one guy was using 30-pound. We've used – I don't like to use 8 myself because I can't see it to tie it good. But usually 8 to 12 works about the best. Anything higher than that, the bees will cut it right where it makes the X on your frame unless you're feeding them real good. I, I think I did use like eight or ten pound tests, yeah. something like that. So, on most of them, I did some of them without and some of them with it. But you I don't kinda... have to use new fishing line. You know, if you're changing fishing line out on your fishing pole instead of just streaming it off and throwing it in the garbage, roll it up onto a stick in that and use it for putting in your uh, frames. Save money that way. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, Don. That's all okay. I had. Okay. Paul, you're up again. Oh, my God. I forgot. My, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Don, <laughs> I got a ton of questions tonight. Don, <laughs> I got my scissors done, <laughs> but I'm using the plaster cell foundation. I didn't get a chance to put an extra coat of wax on there. You think I could throw them on? 
You can try it. I'm a wood and wax person, so when you're talking plastic, you know, it's Greek to me. The bees don't like it. It's hard to cut a cell. It's hard to do a lot of things with plastic. I, yeah, I know. All right, I'll see what happens. I got, I'm, I'm going to be up the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> At least you don't have to worry about getting gray hair. Send, you need to send some of your students up to me. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> all right, thanks. Uh, we are all caught up on questions right now. So keep talking about something, Don. Come on. Okay. Well... <laughs> I'm surprised more people getting these chats, they sit there and they are afraid to ask something, you know. I'm no expert on any of this beekeeping stuff and I'm no master beekeeper. What I'm telling you is working things where I've made a lot of mistakes and all I'm trying to do is help you prevent, make the same mistakes. Mistakes cost you money and when you've got four or five hives, you can't afford to lose a couple of them. So every little thing that I get out there, try to help another beekeeper save them hives or to promote them, you know, being more successful. Okay. Well, see, that got everybody going now. So here we go. A bunch of questions. Uh, Ale Taylor is Taylor's first. first. Go ahead. Hi, Don. Hey. Did you recall a couple of weeks ago, I talked about having two, uh, I'd made a split and had two weak hives and was going to combine them. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I travel a little bit. So when I went back, uh, to try to combine them, they were both empty. I mean, there wasn't a bee in either one of them. Um, no signs of mites, no signs of anything. They were just gone. Um, all my other hives are fine, but those two, they just disappeared. Sometimes they fly out. That's one reason why when you make a split on a big, strong hive, you don't make a walk-away type split because you got a lot of resources there. You're better off to make one frame splits or very minimal amount of bees because there's no guarantee they're going to come back. There's predators out there. And this year, there's more predators than ever. Yeah, when, when I made the, uh, made the split, they weren't very far apart, maybe eight or 10 feet apart. Uh, but I was just surprised when I went to combine them, they weren't there. Well, you've seen in my yard, uh, mine ain't eight, 10 feet apart. Mine's eight inches apart, and they're right. on rows, eight, 10, 15 on a row, so. Uh, yeah, this distance I'm, has nothing to do with it. It's the flying out when they mate, they don't return. Okay. Okay. Second question I've got is that uh, on the, uh, on, I'm getting ready to extract honey. Uh, and a lot of my frames that have honey on them also have brood on them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have, you know, and they're actually, as they're, they're uh, backfilling, as soon as, uh, as the, they hatch, they're backfilling, but I can't really extract them because I still got brood on them. Well, that's what they have a strainer for. Get those arms and legs out. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, you know, I mean, some people, they don't worry about it. We don't try to worry about it. But if we have frames in the brood chamber that are stretched out and mostly drawn and they got brood in there, we put them in the second box or the third box and let the brood hatch out. And once it hatches out, you know, you got a cocoon there. It's just going to strengthen the comb and then extract it. The other alternative is you can either, if you've got small patches, like three to five inches of a brood, you can cut around it and leave the caps on and don't spin it so hard. The faster you spin it, you can blow those caps off and then you're gonna have larvas coming out. Or you could just take a knife and cut it out. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, okay. Donald, go ahead. Um, all right, with the, uh, uh, along the questions of what you were just talking about, about cutting out the, the comb, uh, mm -hmm. if you just cut out the honey part, will they, will they build back the comb if it's like in the center of the, the frame? Well, sure. Oh, okay. We, we cut out, sometimes we cut out, uh, if a frame has got pretty much halfway good comb towards the bottom or to one side is a lot of drone, we'll lay it on top of a lid and just cut it out. And then okay. throw it back in the hive. They'll draw it back. Okay. Even when we cut out uh, queen cells, sometimes we looks like Swiss cheese when we get done with them. I mean, <laughs> if there's 10 cells there and they're cut out a one-inch plug or an inch and a quarter plug, you got plugs cut out all over. You go back in a day or two, and it's all nice new wax filling, good comb. 
Okay. All right. And uh, also, the guy was talking about um, you preferring solid uh, bottom boards to uh, a screen bottom board. Um, with as far as ventilation goes, because uh, I run uh, the top feeders, the no drown top feeders that you mm -hmm. you make. Um, should I cut holes in it and put screen over them, or uh, we have on on those feeders? I don't know which version you got, but the latest one that we built was a, all ninety degrees, and it's a, a shoe box in there. There's two inch and eighth holes in the back of that feeder, and they got screen over them. All right, and you put the screen on the inside. Right, that's okay. the exception uh, on your. On your supers and your high boxes, you put the screen on the outside. And the reason for that is if you put the screen on the inside, you're going to catch that screen with a frame and it'll jerk it out of your fingers and you'll drop a frame. Right. And when you put the screen on the inside of your feeder, when you reach down to pick up your lid, you don't get them sharp little pieces of that screen up under your fingernail. Right. Okay. That's the reason why we have two places for them screens. What do you call it? Uh, common sense beekeeping? Well, yeah, it's supposed to be common sense, but a lot of people are a little short in sense now. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it's right. like, you know, on screen bottom boards, you know, there's people that praise them, but we start making brood in February. And when you right. get a cold evening and you got a screen bottom board, that cold air comes up and then you've got uh, stone brood and you've got chalk brood and you get, right. you know, chilled out brood it just sets you back yeah and then if you try to put that insert in there you end up getting that debris underneath there and if you're not remembering that to clean it out each and every time you open that hive you get the buildup of the wax moth and high beetles and ants and it just it's not worth the headache for me yeah all right all right thanks mm -hmm. joe may you're next don when a queen flies out to get mated what percentage of the hive does she take with her amount of bees? Well, she's going to collect bees from all your hives in your bee yard. I mean, you might have a mini nuke goes out with maybe a cup or a cup and a quarter of bees and come back with a pound to three pounds of bees. I've seen it happen many a time. Oh, yeah, but I mean, how many does she take out of the original hive? Does the, the majority she of them go with her? If it's a mini nuke and you're running cycles on your mini nuke, you're going to have a certain amount of young bees that are not going to fly out that have it oriented to that box. So you're going to get the older bees to fly out with her, and she's going to bring back extra. Oh, yeah. I've seen them fill a double D or five frame deep with bees yeah. when they come mm -hmm. back. I mean, no problem on that. What about these little bitty star foam mini nukes? You ever tried them? I don't really care for plastic and that because of the sweating and the uh, moisture problems. And as cheap as I am, I like to build everything myself out of wood. Yeah. Well, when you try to build 200 of them, though, it's like building them. Well, yeah, but, you know, the, the problem you have if you're going to expand out too fast with 200 mini nukes that are all styrofoam, they're all the same color, so you get a lot more drifting. That's the main reason to put, you know, different colored paint on them so you get more of a positive flyback. Yeah. You can paint star foam, latex, so I did. Yeah. I'm trying them. I don't know how they'll work. We'll see. That's what you have to do is trial and error. We'll see. Don't take much to stock them. <laughs> Man. All right. That's all I got. Okay. All right. Patricia, you're up. Yeah, sorry. Mine's already been answered. Okay. Y'all are doing a good job tonight. Do you, do you want to put a plug in for your kittens that are left? Oh, would anybody like a kitten? I have two. <laughs> they are so cute. I'll even mail them. Oh, no. <laughs> a stray cat took up here and had kittens, and so <laughs> they're really cute. Yes, yeah, they are. Catch <laughs> All right. Uh, up next is Eric, then. Go ahead, Eric. All right, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, Don, you probably don't remember me. I came up here about uh, a few, less than three a month ago. I got some bees from you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a few questions. I got a lot of questions, but what size are your uh, medium high bodies? How tall are they? How tall are they? Yeah. I make mine six and three quarters. Six and three quarters. All right. I didn't know I wanted to check on that. 
and, I, and I also I got something else too for people wanting ant, got ants. I use a one part borax like you wash your clothes with, and three parts powdered sugar, and they love that stuff. It'll wipe, <laughs> it'll wipe them out. You know, then I put it right on the ground and cover it up with a jar lid, and and then my ants will go right in there and they'll it, it wipes them out. So, uh, if you got any bees now available for sale. What what do you want? Packages? Uh, yeah, I'd like to get a couple of packages and a new. Call my son. He shook a package today in the rain for a guy. So if you don't want too many, he might shake you some packages. Okay. Uh, where do I get his number at? It, it's on the web page. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. He's running all the queens because I don't have time to do students over here and do everything. It's hard enough for me to get out and help him on his out yards. Okay. I'm about to order my uh, essential oils. So which ones do I need to get? Tea tree oil, spearmint, wintergreen, and lemongrass. Right. Okay. If right. you want eucalyptus, get you some eucalyptus. Okay. We mix a little eucalyptus in every so often. Okay. All right, well, is, is the boric acid, is that bad for your bees? Well, the, we used to use boric acid in the political signs. We stopped using them about three, de three years or four years ago. Okay, we, so if I'm, if I'm using it for those ants on the ground like that, it's not going to hurt the bees then if they go down there and try to get that sugar, is it? Well, that's why we put it in political signs. They can't get to it. So I just keep so, covering up with that lid and they'll be all right then. Yeah, well, I'd be careful what you put on the ground because if there's no honey flow, bees will pick up anything. They're getting Coke cans, you, you name it. Whatever there is, they'll get on it. Yeah, well, I got plenty of syrup out there for them, and, and yeah. I ain't taking it now. But yeah. yeah, maybe you got a good honey flow where you're at. Probably do. All right, well, that's all I had. I appreciate it. Okay. John, you're up next. Oh, hey, Don. Hey. Do you ever use a chicken egg incubator to hatch queen cells. I was wondering uh, how long does a nuke, like how long will they last in there after they hatched out? You can probably run them to the day they hatch out if you use cell protectors too. You gotta buy the stands for them, the cell protectors, and put your grafts in the cell protectors. And that way if they do hatch out ahead of time, the cell protector keeps them there. If you're well, gonna I mean, do like, small amounts, you can make it out of uh, number eight hardware cloth, but is if you're going to do a large amount, you can buy them by the thousand. They ain't that much. I mean, like once she hatches out, how long will she last in there? You know what I mean? Like with no other bees, like you know, you if you have, work or something that day, and she hatched out. Usually, you if they hatch out, you got a good day to get them put in. To put them in a hive after. Yeah. yeah. You, right, yeah. you got to have That's honey in there. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as they hatch, they got to get something to eat. They'll starve to death in thirty minutes. So they well, gotta, and don't put it where they can get water in it. They'll glue their cells down, take it from experience. Three days is max. They start dying after three days. Well, where do you put the honey? Like in the, just in the queen cage? Do you put I, it? That's what I, I, I got it as a system I use. I used to just take a piece of drawed comb, put a little bit in one cell so she could get to it, not water in it. Cause she don't, she'll be, she'll glue herself down. You can't get her up. If you're going to do a whole bunch of them, what we used to do before, we, we had some blocks of wood about two and a half inches wide and about 10 inches long and just drill you a series of holes. You can buy these three-eighths uh, test tubes. They're about three-eighths by an inch and a half, and you can set the cell in it. So it's pointing down and put a drop of honey in the bottom of each cell, uh, the little test tube. And they work good, but, you know, you always got a problem, you know, you're dropping them, busting them. So we've gone to a lot of the plastic. Yeah, I'd ordered some plastic queen cages. Uh, but they have the cell protectors or the queen cages? They're the queen cages. Do I need the cell protectors? I'd ordered like the plastic ones that flip up and then they have the small little uh, hole in the top, you know, where you could put the candy if you want to, but then it has a big opening that flipped up did i do but i need those, them you those there are for putting queens that virgin queens in or mated queens either one but if you're going to do on a small scale why don't you just make a denton cage three hole denton cage it's an inch wide by three and a half inches long three and a quarter inches long off. 
with the hardware cloth? Yeah, well, you don't need hardware cloth on it. You can take, uh, if you bought any package of bees, you can use that screen off of a package. That's the right I size. Like that. All right. Yeah. All righty. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay. okay. Mike Morris, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Don, I was wondering, uh, when is it, when should you start, stop pulling the honey? Like, stop, okay, stop in August pulling? or, yeah. We pull all of our honey we can get off of the hives because the honey just gets in the way and it's hard to lift it constantly. We're trying to make bees and make splits. So it's a right, lot more productive to pull the honey, and then if you need to, just feed honey back. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I was wondering. Okay. So you save the honey, and that's what I was doing is feeding it back to them? Yeah, don't it cut it. Feed slow. it direct. Okay. Never mix water huh? with it. Never mix water with honey right. when you're feeding it back. Right, right, right. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. All right, Paul, you're up again. Don, did you ever use a uh, sugar shaker to check for mites? No, to me it's a waste of time. Really? Yeah. Why do you what, say that? What are you going to do with the sugar? Dump it in the ground? Now you create an ant problem. <laughs> If you really want to get a, a thing, do an alcohol wash, then dump the bees out. I mean, most people really? get gray hair worrying about all the problems with their bees, and that's why they're having so much problems. All right. I've they heard of people the using a uh, test in their bees three times a week because they're worried about them getting mites. You could have zero mites in your whole hive. If you had 500 hives, zero mites. One commercial driver goes down the road hauling bees. You could have as many as 500 uh, mites in each hive just because he drove down the street. They fly. If the hive is Gosh, pretty yeah. strong, it manages itself. Yeah, I just bought a, a sugar shaker this morning. Well, they had the alcohol washed there. Alcohol wash, I but think, if will you do, do the alcohol wash, does, if you're going to do alcohol wash, can kill? you spot the queen? If you can't spot the queen, don't do, do an alcohol wash. Because when that alcohol, you dump those, you've got to get a couple hundred bees and put it in the alcohol wash. And then shake them around a little bit. Your queen's in there. She's history. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you, if you do the alcohol wash, do you kill the bees? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they put you in alcohol, uh, you ain't going to fare very well. <laughs> <laughs> I have another question. Um, I put the uh, Apivar strips in there um, two weeks ago. And now we're in this massive honey flow here. And I didn't think my hives were going to explode the way they did. Now I want to take the strips out because I'm worried they're going to, they're going to move um, the nectar up into the honey supers and contaminate that. Well, ask yourself, why did you put that stuff in your hive to start with? I know, I know. <laughs> but it's like you said, I'm, I'm learning from my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just went with the axillic acid and something, you know. Uh. The bees, if you use the strips, are going to be a little bit more irritable than if you used oxalic acid. Haven't you yeah. noticed the temperament is a little more ill now? Well, you know what it was? I went to Better Bee, and he was like, he told me they used the Apivar strips in the spring, and then they used the axillic acid in the fall. Right. They don't treat, they don't treat every month. Did you ask so. him, what does he do? Is he got his main money coming in from the supplies, or does he keep bees, or is he buying bees every year? Well, they, they have a pretty big uh, apiary up there, but, you know, I'm sure them they're, they're – selling bees you know they're not well, they're not selling honey see i'm here i'm not trying to sell you nothing i'm trying to give you advice when you go to a place like that they want to sell you every product they can sell you majority of the stuff well, you don't yeah. need so you know 
you exactly. have to do I mean, what your that, conscience says to do. Well, you're right. I mean, they're looking at that pocket, you know. But now, if I take those strips out, whatever's in, whatever honey I have in there now is, I mean, it's contaminated. So it, you're going to change your wax. To... You change not wax That's too. Right. Yeah. Whenever you put anything into your hive, it's going to be absorbed into the wax and into the honey. So if you're not changing wax out, you're going to have contaminated wax and contaminated honey. So you have to watch what you're putting in. Those check mite strips, that's one reason they pulled them off the market. They're still selling some places, but that's Kumafos. That's a nerve agent that was used in, I don't know, the Vietnam War. It gets into everything and it doesn't come out. They need to eat the honey. Yeah. So the least you do yeah. to them bees, the better off you are. They don't do it out there in the woods, and the bees seem to survive and, pretty well. I, you know, I don't even know why the hell I bought those strips. Because quite honestly, I don't even—I <laughs> didn't even see any mites on the bees. So. Good salesman <laughs> up there, huh? Yeah, uh, they must have saw me coming, boy. <laughs> All right, that's all. <laughs> all right, we're running in overtime here. So, Anthony, you're up next. Go ahead. Paul, you're breaking the first rule of beekeeping, buddy. Take all those catalogs and throw them away. <laughs> Learn from me and everybody else. I got a whole bunch of stuff in the other room that I'm never going to use. Uh, <laughs> I just want to make sure I understand something, and I think I did, because it's something I wasn't aware of. When the queen, queen leaves the hive to take her mating flight, she actually, does bees from the hive go with her when she goes on the mating flight? Right. Okay. Yeah, in all my reading, I hadn't seen that anywhere, and I wasn't aware of that. Okay. And... Um, I think I've told you that I've tried all versions of foundation, and for me, I like starter strip, like a one-inch starter strip. For me, I think it's the, it works the best for me. Um, and I just wax them in. As I buy my frames here, they've got a slot in the bottom, a slot in the top and bottom, and they got the holes for wires. But the frames here don't come with a little wooden – Wedge, wedge that you that I've seen you guys talk about and seen in your video, mm -hmm. but I just melted beeswax and I I waxed it on both sides into the groove, and you know I noticed when I was out there yesterday they they're building it really well, and we if all if you're waxing them you know you can put a name with a uh, like a, a baster a turkey baster you could use a teaspoon. I found that the most economical way is get a paintbrush, a two inch paintbrush, just an old cheap brush and dip it into the wax and just stick your starter strip in that groove and just brush on one side and just dip it again and slowly turn that frame. And you've got to hold your fingers on the side of the frame to hold that wax straight up and down. And then just hit one other side, just brush it real quick. You don't have to drip it in there, just brush it. What a little bit of wax falls down there, that's more than enough. After it cools, it takes you, you know, three to four uh, seconds. It's going to get cooled down. Just reach your finger up and, and get a little tug. You can feel it. If it's not uh, secure, brush it again. And we all know they start in the, the middle and start going down. So they've right. got it well secured right there. So I forget who was saying that they had it fall out. Start a strip fall out with fishing line. I didn't understand why we would put fishing line on a starter strip. Well, if you're putting uh, a starter strip in, if you don't push that wedge, the, the people that break the wedge off don't clean the wedge first of all, and there's a little piece of wood on there, and it holds yeah. up against the wood. You have to clean it with a box cutter and clean that groove real good. When you put that wax in there, you have to push down on it real hard and then put brads in there. That'll hold it tight. Yeah, I've seen you do it on the video. Yeah. And 
stay if your fingers don't hurt, you're not pushing it hard enough. Right. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's it for me. I'll let someone else ask a question if they okay. have time. Okay. Thank you. Eric, you're up next. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to I have three real quick questions. On your oxalic acid vaporizer you have on the website, does it come with that little measure? Yeah, comes with a measure and everything, and we send some acid with it. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, if they draw the comb out real thick at the top of the frame, because like maybe there was a new frame in there and uh, they didn't have the cap, so they just drew that out thicker. Can I just cut that off? You know, cut it down and, and let them fix it? Yeah, yeah, you can cut it down. Okay, okay. And when I was down there getting my bees from you, you told me somebody that I could talk to about getting a grant in Tennessee. Aaron, yep. somebody. Uh, Aaron Burns from Burns and the Bees. He's up around Knoxville. He got a grant from Tennessee. There's two or three other people, one up by Knoxville, getting a grant. Okay, and that's who I need to. Uh, and yep. Burns, Burns and yep. Bees. And he's uh, and he got the grant from them. Yep, he got a grant here last year. Okay. All right, that's it's all. Called I Burns have. and the Bees. Burns and the Bees. Right. All right, that's all I got. Appreciate okay. it. All right, last question for the night. Robert White, you are up. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Don, I got a couple questions for you. I've got okay. three hives. How many uh, nukes do I need to keep on hand for three hives? Uh, right now? A very minimal of one for each hive, but to be on the safe side, I would have two because bees are going to multiply. They're going to swarm. They're going to they're going to have queen cells. Okay, another question I got for you. If the queen lays in brood, and once the brood hatches out, does the queen relay brood in them same cells again? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's all I got for you. Thanks, okay. Don. All right. And that's a wrap, everyone. Thank you, Don. All right, everybody. Appreciate you showing up. See you Get all your thinking week. caps on next week. Thank you, Don. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.